So if at this point you were able to load up your project, one of the things you'll notice is that the catalog doesn't quite work right. If I open it in the browser, it opened a new tab in the browser. Well, that's the browser, but we need it in, an, we, we need it in a real device. If you do load up the project as a real app on a real device, you go over to the catalog. On my device it does open up the it does open up the the, the website, but it opens up in a in a web browser in a different process. It actually took me out of my app, and I can't really show it to you here, but on the device it took me to a it took me to the web browser app. It took me out of my app. It's very subtle. You might not ever notice it, but if I then press back, uh, whoops, it took me off somewhere else. So that's a problem. I don't want it to go off to my web browser out of my app. What we can do is create an in-app uh, browser. Within the app itself, load up a mini web browser and stay in the app. When you're done browsing the web, we close that in-app browser and we're in still our app. That's very common, for example, if I have Twitter, I open a link in Twitter and I open a temporary web browser. I'm done with that link in, in Twitter, I close that and I'm still in Twitter. Same thing with Facebook, etc. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the in-app browser Cordova code to open up a mini web browser in our project. My handout says how to do it, but let's educate ourselves a little bit. Go to your web browser, and we'll go back to the Cordova website. Remember the address is cordova.apache.org. Let's go check out the Apache documentation, because obviously I have here a handout, or I have here all the answers. But if you need to do something on your own, we can get the documentation here. So let's go to cordova.apache.org. Let's go to um, at the button here, documentation. And then on the left, in the section of reference plugin, we're going to have a subsection of Cordova dash plugin dash in app browser. alphabetical, let's see, orientation, so you will see somewhere there, Cordova plugin in app browser. Click on Cordova plugin in app browser. All right, so this plugin provides a web browser view that displays when calling Cordova.inAppBrowser.open. The most basic bit of the code is Cordova.inAppBrowser.open, and then some uh, some uh, arguments. The in-app browser window behaves like a standard web browser, and you can't access Cordova APIs. For this reason, the in-app browser is recommended if you need to load third-party untrusted content instead of loading that into the main Cordova web view. The in-app browser is not subject to the whitelist, nor is opening links in the system browser. So, we can open... HTML is very powerful nowadays in that it can open, it can access resources all over the internet. You can have uh, a complex JavaScript file on a server where all of your users from all over the world are connecting to that JavaScript file doing what it needs to do. 
and then that JavaScript sends it back to your browser. Well, the problem with that, if a hacker figures out that all of your users are connecting to a certain JavaScript file, then their attack is going to be getting into that JavaScript file, getting into your server. And then that'll compromise your app, everyone's app of yours. So here, we have the ability to load untrusted or external content in a web view that doesn't affect the device. It's sandboxed in the web browser. So whatever's happening in there will not break out of that container to affect the device. Technically, what we're writing and creating in this Cordova project could mess with other aspects of the device. Um, but with the CSP, that also helps prevent that. And if you do need to load untrusted content or external content, we have the net browser. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to load up the college's catalog of classes. If, for some reason, that gets hacked, that'll not affect your app. It's going to run in the in-app browser, sandboxed and separate from your main device. The in-app browser provides default, its own default GUI, its own controls for back, forward, etc talks about backwards compatibility, how to install it, we've already got it installed, and it also, all of these Cordova plugins are pretty much always going to say, make sure you put your code inside of on-device-ready. On-device-ready occurs after a device-ready uh, event is triggered. So we're going to do that, no problem. And we've got Cordova in-app browser open. So we've got the actual open uh, command or method. The way this works is we've got the Cordova object in that browser, notice the spelling, and then the open method. We have to provide it an address, a target of how are we opening this external file, and any options, optional options. So the ref is simply uh, a web address, oh not that, uh, the URL, it's a string. So we will load up a string, call encode URI if the URL contains Unicode characters. So not necessary always. Okay, target. Then we've got the target in which to load the URL. It's optional. If you don't mention anything here, it'll be self in the same window. Opens in the Cordova web view if the URL is in the whitelist. Otherwise, it opens in the in-app browser. Blank opens in the browser and system opens in the systems web browser so if the person is using a certain web browser we, we can load that one instead of the one built into Cordova options uh, options we have location location set to yes that's the default which is would you like to also show the location bar set to yes or no the location bar do you want to show people an address bar of where you've sent someone when they've clicked the link yes or no for Android only we have a few other options hidden equal to yes for example create the browser and load the page but not show it so this is going to load an external website, but not show it to the user. So stuff can happen behind the scenes that the user's not seeing. So we can load, again, JavaScript files from a server, but the user won't see it. Zoom, hardware back, set to yes, use the hardware back button to navigate through the in-app history. Okay, so on an Android device, we have a back button. The back button may have a default behavior of that if I'm in the in-app browser, I click back, that'll jump me all the way back out of the in-app browser back to my app. Even if I had gone in three steps deep in history in the in-app browser. Instead, if I set the option of hardware back equal to yes, now the back button will take into account the history that I've created in the in-app browser. So if I've loaded an external website and I've gone three levels deep, press back, it just goes back one level in the browser, back, 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 rather than the back jumping me out of the browser. 
If I'm, if I'm loading external content with audio and video, I can set media playback requires user action to yes, meaning that the audio content or video content that we're learning loading externally plays. The default is no, so it's not going to play any sound or video that we're loading externally unless we say yes. And there's iOS only options, you can explore, Windows only options, this works on all the platforms basically. There's some quirks in Firefox, in Windows, if we're doing it in the browser there's some quirks. There's event listeners, successful load, or failures. So all of that is more complexity. In our case, the way that we need to use it is, on the art screen, there's a button to open the catalog. So we can set our code up very directly. When we click that button, open that website in a browser. We may want to open more than one website in the in-app browser. So we're going to create a more generic function that we can reuse multiple times. It's often better to create an algorithm to write code that we can reuse rather than rewriting code many times if we figure out the right algorithm the right code we just reuse the code that's what my handout says so what we're going to do is write some javascript edit up our html a little bit so that then we're able to open an external website let's do it backwards first let's write the html first so number three here. In the index file we will do the following. Where we have the link to the college's website, we are going to replace href equals website. We're going to replace that with a simple dummy link. And instead we're going to add something new, data-url. We'll explain that in a moment. And in that data element attribute, we're going to add the website. We're also going to add a class to that button. We've been adding IDs to buttons most of the time. This one button runs this one code. An ID can only be used once. Well, I want any button throughout my whole project that is a web address to open in the in-app browser. So using a class will allow me to apply this JavaScript code to any button I click on throughout my whole project and we'll see what then we write in JavaScript to mean this button that I clicked goes to that website. So I'm gonna move this over here in Notepad. Let's open the index.html. And in my case, line 158, is where I've got the part that says open the college's catalog. So somewhere around one line 153. Somewhere on line 153. I have a href target blank rel external data role button data icon catalog. There's the button that will open the external link. Let's change well, let's leave href alone for the moment, and before href, I'll write href again, so that this will save us a little bit of typing. Write href to a dummy link. It doesn't go anywhere, but it behaves like a link. It has the old href. And HTML5 gives us the ability to have data-something data role, data icon, data add back button true. So data dash whatever is not jQuery mobile. It's HTML5. Data dash something lets us store some attribute, some bit of data, attach it to some HTML element. We can make these up. The jQuery mobile team made up data role. They made up data icon. They made up data add back button true. So we're going to make up one here. Instead of href, it'll be data dash URL. 
that does not exist in jQuery Mobile. And the reason data role works and data icon works is because the jQuery Mobile specification gives that a meaning. Inside the jQuery JS file, jQuery Mobile JS file, it gives meaning to data role. It gives meaning to data icon. We've invented data URL. We will give it meaning in our JavaScript. So this is like, this is an attribute, and this is like a temporary holding spot. This particular button has this particular address data attached to it. This will now behave differently because it's an app button rather than a website. We no longer need target blank and rel external. Target blank was for a website. This is not a website anymore, it's an app. Rel external is for a website. This is not a website anymore. We still got data role button because it's jQuery mobile, data icon because it's jQuery mobile, and we've invented data URL. We've encoded a little bit of data to this link, this address. So confirm that your code looks like mine. We're going to save the index file, and then in the Oh, one more thing, class. We need to know that we're clicking this button to launch this website. So my handout further was saying, okay, replace href with pound and then add data URL to website. Check. Add class btn URL. It's a class or an ID, so it's the last item. I like to add a class or ID as the very last item and the last attribute of any element. BTN URL. So now this has a identifier. I've been saying over and over, we need a unique identifier. Well, this to some degree is unique, but because it's a class, it, being, it can be used multiple times for any button. One more button, 100 more buttons in my project. I can attach this class to 99 more buttons. We will see via JavaScript. How does it know it's this button with this address. JavaScript will let us choose this one. All right. So we've got the data URL and the class. Notice my spelling. And I'm going to copy that because I'm going to forget how I spelled it in two seconds. Copy that. And now we need to open our Codica.js file. back on the handout. Edit Codiga.js and inside the device ready function. So because this is Cordova code, it must be on the on device ready function. We're going to create a jQuery mobile selector class btn URL. So any, any button with that class that we click on will trigger the following code. If we've clicked on any button with that class, trigger the following code. Get URL. We're going to define get URL, of course. But notice we're passing also the argument of dollar sign this. Dollar sign means jQuery. So we're passing the object, the particular object we clicked on dollar this means this object, this button that I clicked on, pass it into the get URL function. We're passing the data in. So any button that we click on, its attributes as an object will be passed into get URL. Then we say cordova.inatbrowser.open and there's a spot there for us to type an address. That could have been an address that we wrote of swccd.edu. But that address is encoded in the data URL attribute of that button. So the, the particular button that we clicked on, this button that we clicked on, it has a, this is a 
query right here. It has a data attribute of data URL. Whatever is being saved in data URL, use it as the web address. That's what all of this is saying. Whatever we saved into data URL, use it. So if we had a completely different button on a completely different screen, all we would need to do to that button is add another data URL equals and a completely different address. And the JavaScript here will know which button you mean and which address you mean. Comma blank because we want it to open in a new in-app browser instance. Location equal to yes. We want to show the address bar. That can be put to yes, no, etc. And then that closes the function. So, in our JavaScript, anywhere inside of get name, I'm sorry, anywhere inside of uh, on device ready, we need to do this. So I'll just add it at the end, before the end of on device ready. In my case, it's line 51. Dollar symbol, that's our jQuery to select an element in the HTML document in quotes. It's the dot btn URL. Anything that has a class of btn URL, let's select it. Dot on method. On the event of a click or a double click or a drag or a right click. On the event of a click. Comma, run a function. So function. That's the syntax right there. Yes. On the rest ready, uh, you put all these functions on false, on the zoom, on show. Hmm. On zoom? Okay. It seems we have a variety of them to choose from. Right. I mean, uh, function on the rest ready. Should include uh, the rest of the function of this script. And then show name, uh, get name, it's uh, the part of on device ready. Yes, uh, it should have been. Uh, just to back up here, let me just confirm. My on device ready function starts up on line 6 and it goes all the way down to 52. So all of our previous code should exist on on device ready. We took a moment to put it in there because it had been all outside completely of the original anonymous function. It had been all down there. And in my note, I said if we have any pre existing JavaScript, we should cut it and move it so that it's inside the on device ready. So, on this particular button, function. I put get URL, maybe we should call it, call it load URL, whatever we want. We'll depart here. Load URL. Sure. Just need to remember that that's the name we're using instead of my handout, get URL. But again, we could call this anything. We can call this kitty cat. And it'll work as long as we're consistent. We're saying, when we click any button, let's launch load URL. But we need to also pass the particular button we clicked on and that's dollar parentheses. That's our jQuery selector. No quotes. This. This object that we've clicked on. Select it. The jQuery selector. Dollar parentheses. Select it. Whatever button that has that class. Select it. Pass it into load URL. Notice no quotes because it would search for an element called quote this, which is different than the actual object of this. Therefore, on the next line, we have to define function load URL. That takes in an attribute, which we'll call, uh, well, technically it's the object, but well, we'll just say the URL. We're passing the URL. Well, let's do it more correct. We will do it OBJ. I need to update that handout. We're technically passing the whole object. 
the button. And the button is an object with an attribute of data URL, with an attribute of data role, with an attribute of etc. It's got this object has many properties. So technically, we're passing the whole object. And we then run the Cordova dot in app browser property dot open method so Cordova in app browser open and the plain way is simply in quotes we would have then a website here we'll do it this way then we'll do it the right way comma blank underscore blank comma location equals yes Okay, so this way would load website.com whenever any button is clicked. This is the basic way to use the in-app browser. We've set ourselves up, however, to encode a specific address to a link. So instead of a hard-coded address, it's a dynamic address based on the object, the particular button we've clicked on. Dot data method. There is a data URL, data role, data icon. There's a bunch of data attributes attached to that object. You see that right there. That object, that link has data URL, data role, data icon. So, in quotes, URL, lowercase, because it's data URL lowercase. And that's, that's our code. That's how it can know which of the 99 buttons I have on screen. All of those buttons have a button URL class. And we know it's the particular one we clicked on because we pass the selector of this, this object that I've clicked on. And we've encoded the address in data URL. So we will then retrieve the data inside of data URL and use it as our first parameter here to load a website. I know. Yes. Yes. As I was saying, you can do this however, with whatever names and such, to some degree, as long as you're consistent. Like right here, I also said get URL instead of load URL. So as long as we have those names consistent, they will work. Again, we call this kitty cat. And if I call my function kitty cat, it'll work. Now, as for the object, I was kind of thinking to myself, yeah, my handout says the URL. Um, but as I thought about it right now, I realized, you know, we're passing the whole object in. Might as well then say, you know, we're passing the object in, specifically then the data URL. Whereas my handout, I'm just being too literal here that we're just passing in the URL. Not really, we're passing the whole object. So if we do it exactly as a handout, it'll work. As we do it this way too, it should work, and we'll test it right now. Oops, yeah, that one will not work. Cordova. In-app 
browser.open. Okay, that all seems to be correct. If I had that mistake, I would have seen it in the in the console, but good thing we caught it here. So I'm gonna save both my index and JavaScript. Confirm that all of this code is good. I'm gonna run this. And try that again the same way. Taco run Android and Taco run browser. When I load it up on my device, I'm also going to load it up. I'm going to get used to also loading it up in the Chrome, in the Chrome Dev Tools. Okay, so this is loading up in my real device. Go to art screen. You won't see it in Chrome exactly, but then I will click on catalog. And on my real device, it opened up in the in-app browser. It looks different. It's still in the app. The little browser at the top is simplified. It didn't go completely over to Google Chrome. And um, oh, here it loaded up over there, but that's okay. And then so I can uh, kind of browse around over on the college's website. That's got its own back and forward button built in. I can X to close that, and I'm still in my app. Oh yes, sorry, I made it open here. Okay, in the browser, uh, I don't think it'll be as impressive, so I'll do catalog. Okay, yeah, that's fine. In the browser, it's trying to open as an external link. There's a very simple in-app browser here, which is not opening because our content security policy never allowed for this, our meta tag of the CSP. And that's what this is saying here. Refused to frame this because it violates the following CSP. In my default source, I never said that it's okay to open this frame. Note that frame source was not explicitly set, so default source is used as a fallback. So again, that content security policy is very powerful in that it'll help protect you from loading external content and getting hacked and so forth. But we have to be very explicit when we can load or not. That's why we copied over in the index file that's why I said I would recommend you copy the comment up here to go read exactly what all of this means and does. It worked on my device, but just for completion, if I want it to work in the browser, I need to declare that frame source, the source of frames, what is valid for me to open in a frame, which is, I guess, their way of calling the in-app browser. So my, to my content security policy, or to the frame, I need to add that link. Um, I'll do it this way. So this is optional. You can do this if you'd like, but again, the meta content security policy way back on line 9 of the index file. There's content and it's not very well delineated. There's default source, we are allowed self, we are allowed data, we are allowed gap, we are allowed this address, we are allowed unsafe eval, semicolon. So all of that declares default elements, semicolon. Then there's a section of style. So we are allowed self style sheets and inline style sheets semicolon
then media source. Wild card of an asterisk, everything. We're allowed all media. Never here did I say we're allowed to open frames. So what I would do at the end of media source, semicolon, frame-src. We're about to say these are allowed when we're trying to open a frame. And again, I wish that they had written this, or maybe it's not possible. I wish the standard would, would look something like this. Don't write this. Frame source colon, blah, 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 comma, blah, 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 comma, semicolon. I wish that's how it was. But as we're seeing, there is no comma, there is no colon there and no commas. It's like this. Default source, item 1, item 2, item 3, item 4. No commas in between them, no colon like, like we're used to with properties and values. Not until the semicolon does that end that statement. So for me, right here, I'm doing frame source. Now I'm saying, what can I load in a frame? Well, I'm trying to load that web address. So notice we just type in a web address, no quotes or anything. And in our case, we're trying to load the same URL. So now I'm saying, if there's any frames, the source of that frame that's allowed is that address. Let me check that. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to run it in the browser. Only in the browser am I getting this uh, explicit problem. So I'll save and run in the browser. I'll see if my frame wants, if my frame loads properly. Just run taco, run browser. So I'm loading up in the browser, go to Art, click Catalog, refuse to display that because in a frame, because it set X frame options to same origin. Okay, this is more about this uh, super protection that the content security policy in this instance of the browser is being too protective. This one is, is new, I think. I haven't seen this one very, very recently. I don't remember seeing it last semester when I taught this two months ago. So I have to look up how to fix this one. I don't have an answer for this one, but this is saying something about same origin, X-frame, something. So I have to look that one up. Probably not too difficult to fix, but at the moment I don't have that to pull out of my sleeve. So if it worked in the device, real or virtual, it worked. If it didn't work in the browser, that's okay. I'm going to take one more break soon, and then we will do more Cordova stuff. But the whole point of the second part of our, the final part of the handout here, is to set ourselves up so that any button can load up any external link. The algorithm then is, we made it generic. Generic is not bad. We're making it in a way so that any button that has a data URL with encoded data will load up any external link, rather than hard coding that that the class catalog button opens the class catalog link, we made a generic. Any button can open any link as long as it's got a data URL. I'm going to take a break here. If you'd like to, maybe go back and set location to no. See the difference there. So we'll take a break, then we'll do more Cordova. It's 8.26. We'll be back at 8.36.